So here we have a Craftsman garage door opener remote control that has stopped working. It's a little keychain type I carry in my pocket. It's quite a bit smaller than your normal visor remote. I carry this in my pocket because my garage is a detached garage in a row of garages and the only way in is through the garage door so it's convenient to have a remote in your pocket. The problem is it takes a lot of abuse. The first thing that happens to them is this little loop on the corner that holds your key ring breaks off about 30 seconds after you buy it. I've improvised a little loop here by bending a piece of paperclip wire into a loop drilling two tiny holes in the case and sticking the ends inside and bending them outward so it stays in there. The other problem that happens to them is the little catches on the side that hold the two halves of the case together break so there's really nothing hold it together which is why I have tape on it right now. But for a while now it's been running intermittently where I'd have to press the button three or four times to get the door to go up and maybe hold the case together or wiggle it or hold this side while I hit the button over there. And then about a week ago it just quit completely. So I figured we'd open it up and see what kind of problems I can find inside. So I thought I'd check if it was actually transmitting. Over here on my laptop I have a RTL SDR software defined radio dongle. And I looked up with the FCC ID number that these remotes transmit on 390 megahertz. You can see with the good remote, my visor remote, if I hit the button, you can see the transmission there. Interestingly, if I hold, uh, the frequency changes quite considerably depending on how I hold it in my hand. That's not particularly good, but at least it works. Uh, the small keychain remote is just dead. No transmission, no matter which button I press. So back at the bench here, let's cut this tape I put on here. Open it up. Inside you have this little circuit board. Pops out. Three switches. Passer, resistor. Back is a backside is a the encoder chip and some other surface mount parts. Battery sits in this side. They don't use a particularly good method for holding the battery because you see this just slides into the catches there in the case. And you got this contact that just makes contact with this little pad here on the PCB and if we bring that up if that'll focus you can kind of see that that little contact bites into that solder blob a little bit and I think that gives it a bad connection after a while but first I'm going to grab the multimeter and check the battery here yeah it's just 3.2 volts battery's not the problem Another thing I've done on these when they quit working is to bend this little center contact back up a little bit and to bend this contact forward a little so it hits the circuit board a little tighter. Good old pencil eraser often works well for cleaning contacts. I'm just going to clean up the circuit board here a little bit. So I can inspect it, see if I can find any bad solder joints or cracked solder joints or anything like that. So I took this thing over to my binocular microscope and with a little inspection of solder joints I noticed that the lead for this looks like a zero ohm resistor here with just a black band. It goes down through this hole beside the switch. You flip it over here and this solder joint is a bad solder joint. It doesn't look cracked. It looks like the solder never wetted the part lead properly and when it was soldered. I'll hop over to the microscope and see if I can take a shot of that. Yeah, take a look at that. That is one ugly solder joint. It doesn't look cracked. I don't think it was ever soldered properly in the first place. So I've got the soldering iron fired up. First thing I'm going to do is reflow this pad here where the battery contact touches the circuit board. Then, see if I can re-solder this other bad joint while working under the camera. Yeah, 
and we'll clean that up with some cleaner. And we'll go see how that looks under the microscope. Now that is a much better looking solder joint. But when I brought it over here to the microscope for an inspection, I noticed something else. Down here in the corner, we have another solder joint that looks bad, and this one has been damaged somehow. You can see something has abraded the circuit board and scratched away the trace there on the corner and scratched away at the solder joint itself. So I think this is the real problem for why the remote quit working. So to see what's been damaging this corner of the circuit board, we'll put it back in the case here. It snaps in like this. Well, if you look, remember my little paper clip loop I put in the corner here? Well, you can see it flops around loose, and this end of the, of the paper clip wire right here lines right up with that spot on the circuit board when you close the two together. So that's what caused the problem. So to fix that damaged trace on the circuit board, I cleaned up the solder joint here, and I took a X-Acto knife and I scraped away the solder mask up the trace a little bit here to get to some good copper. <clears throat> and then I took a fine piece of wire wrap wire and laid it on the trace there and soldered it down. So that should be making a good connection now. So now I need to figure out what to do with my little paper clip keychain loop that I added on here to prevent that from happening again because so you see the circuit board sits right here and that's right where the end of the paper clip wire I added to replace the broken keychain loop right where that sticks out. So what I've done is I've just bent the that end of that wire loop up into the corner of the case here and then clipped off the excess. The other end should be fine over here. It's not in the way of the circuit board or the battery or anything. So you see if the circuit board sits here now, back in the case, the wire, the paper clip wire or loop, the end just sticks up between the circuit board and the case there. So that should be fine. We'll put this thing back together now and see if it transmits. So back on the laptop here with the radio dongle, I can hit the button and there we go. It's transmitting. The frequency is not very accurate. It's supposed to be 390 megahertz. This one's coming in at about 389. And my visor, other visor remote, comes in over here at about 391. So we're back in business. It looks like the problem is caused by mostly by my little keychain wire loop here. That bad solder joint on that other component wasn't good, but I don't know if that was the real problem or not. So I cleaned up the mess of tape I had holding the two halves of this thing together. And you can see on the side here where the there's a little piece busted out. That's where the catch is, where the two halves snap together, which is why I had all the tape on it holding it together. So, to hold the two halves together, I ended up putting a little super glue in between here and in the corners. So hopefully it, it'll stay together, but it won't be glued together so good I can't pop it apart someday again if I have to. I did put a new battery in it because I had one, and I just figured, you know, you don't want to have the battery go to dead, dead in a week after I glued the two halves of the case together. So... I think we should be good to go now for a while. Hopefully it works for a while. These things are rather expensive to replace. They cost close to $50 if you order one from Sears. It's a Craftsman garage door. It's actually manufactured by Chamberlain, but I couldn't find one from them. I replaced this one a couple years ago because the one I had before it went nuts and would just randomly open my door every once in a while for no apparent reason. I thought maybe I was bumping the button in my pocket but I took the remote out and set it in the middle of my dining room table and didn't touch it for two hours. Went back and checked and the door was open again. So I'm not sure what happened to that one. I just bought a new one. 
that bad solder joint. I don't know since that was probably there since it was manufactured and it worked for a while that probably really wasn't the problem. This thing does take quite a bit of abuse bouncing around in my pocket all day when I lean on things and get twisted and banged around and stuff. So you might think that I can't expect it to be trouble free for years on end but right beside it on my keychain I have one of these. This is the remote for my 15 year old SUV and it's never had a problem. It's bounced around right beside this one on my keychain and never had a problem. I've worn the lock unlock icons off the button. I've used it so much. Replaced the batteries maybe once every five or six years and it just works. So Craftsman, Chamberlain, you need to get one of these. Look at how it's built and make your remotes the same way.